Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, I just moved into a new house so I can be as loud as I want, so get ready for some action, and we're going to be taking a look at how to create a dreamy forest look. Now, if you're still starting out, or if you're like me and you're just kind of addicted to it, you like shooting outside in forests and other remote places because it is usually free. But inside a forest, you can often get pretty terrible lighting conditions. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you one look I use to deal with that. So without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So here we've got some footage, you know, pretty terrible looking, but I shot it so I can say whatever I want about it. Um, maybe it'd be good if it's a horror movie, but for now, the subject is kind of lost in all this other mess that is the composition. So the first thing we're going to do is in this first node is we're going to create a quick and dirty sort of HDR thing. Bring our shadows all the way up and bring our highlights all the way down. And then we can sort of redefine what goes where in our gamma. Then we're going to also add in some quick saturation here until it's, yeah. So now that's nice and flat, super flat. So in the next node, I'm going to go over to our curve. I'm just going to adjust the luma. I'm just going to sort of start tweaking this around until our luma levels are a little bit more where we'd like them. So you can be pretty subtle here, but little movements can do big things. So there's quick before and after. So just sort of punching it back up a little bit. Now we're going to start to get into the fun stuff. So I'm going to hit Alt S again, and this is going to be our subject highlight. So pretty standard stuff, add a circle qualifier, Highlight the subject. Right now I have highlight mode turned on over here, which is also Shift H, which is letting us see just what's going on in this node. We're going to turn that off. That's what it looks like. And we're going to feather the absolute dick off this. So there's that. And now just because I know this shot a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and manually track it. So I'm going to go down to corrector 3, circle window, turn on keyframing, add a keyframe just by nudging it. Go to the end. So that's good. And now you'll probably end up tracking your shot, you know, with the actual tracker. But, you know, this isn't something that we normally do in these tutorials. So here's just a quick little manual track for you. Super easy with the auto keyframing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just sort of a little highlight there. So now I'm going to turn off highlight mode and bump the gamma up a little bit, the gain a lot. Nudge the lift back down just a smidge so it isn't quite as poppy outy. So we get some of that contrast back. Gamma up some more. Just sort of fighting between those. And now we can see we've already done a lot to bring our talent out. Uh, to bring it out a little bit more, I'm going to break the grade a little bit and go over to our hue versus saturation and make your shorts pop because let's pretend like we want them to. So now they're just a little bit more out there. And that's probably a bad grading decision. If I was really smart, I'd probably bring them down just because it's sort of drawing our attention down there. But I think it looks cool. And since this isn't a real thing, I'm going to do whatever I want. Now we're going to hop back over here, and I'm going to hit Alt-P to create a new parallel node. And now we will add a big old fat, nasty vignette to this. And this is sort of the, the key to these forest scenes. It's just these gigantic, absurdly soft vignettes. So there's that. I'm going to invert the mask. Shift 8 so you can see what you're doing. So invert. Just over here. This is how it is before. After. Bring the gamma down. And we're going to go pretty hardcore with this. Just because it is so soft. So soft. Just gigantic. All right. And now in this one, I'm also going to bring the saturation up just a bit. Because why the heck not? And by saturation, I mean color boost, because, you know, why not do something a little bit different? Really make those skin tones pop. So now, we can see we've already done a lot. I think that's looking pretty cool. Uh, I think that would be totally fine for, you know, any normal thing. We've come a long way from that up until this. So now you can sort of see what you're supposed to see in this scene, which is nice. So that's, that's fine. Now let's go and get a little bit crazier because I haven't made a tutorial for a while and I feel like adding a bunch of nodes. So after this parallel node, you have to add an obligatory serial node just because you can't add another node right after a parallel node. Then I will hit Alt-L to add a layer node and connect this one boop, right back up to the beginning. 
Now you could probably do this just straight from here, totally fine, but I don't wanna do it that way. So shift H to only see this. We're gonna go into our curves and you'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. I'm gonna crunch this guy down super hard, make it so we pretty much just have highlights happening. And because highlights in the forest are you know, pretty ridiculous like you can see, it helps to sort of soften those out. And so since I didn't have a Pro Mist filter with me, we're gonna make one in post. So now that that's all crunchy, we'll go over to our Blur and Sharpen tab and just blur the bejesus out of this. And go back to our curves and adjust it even more. So really getting what we want. And now we have these nice blurry highlights. And how are we gonna add these back in? Well, that's where we have the layer node. Right click, go to screen, shift H, turn off highlight. And now you can see before and after, look at that. So if you notice these highlights in the trees and stuff, they're just sort of nice and, and glowy and dreamy looking. That's a look that I really like doing a lot. It's super simple. It helps make your stuff look a little bit more interesting. And you can, of course, dial this back just like with any node if you want. Start it like that. So that's fine. And now since we're having a good time, you, know, you could totally leave it like this or you could keep going, which is what I normally do. I have a lot of video RAM. I can put as many nodes as I want in here. So I'll S, create a new node. I will go and add a LUT. This is a two strip LUT. I've made many tutorials on this and I'm using one from the LUT pack. But if you wanna learn how to make one your own, you know, more power to you. I've got this stuff out there. This is basically a two strip with some extra contrast and saturation. So just add that in, cool. And I'm gonna contrast it back up some cause I didn't, it's a little bit flat E. It's gonna use a normal contrast control and really get it. So that's looking fine. I'm gonna reduce the output of that by a good little bit. That just sort of evens out our color and makes it look what I think is a little bit more filmy looking. Then I'm gonna hit Alt S and I'm gonna crunch it back up with some contrast and move the pivot around and then do a quick little one of those guys. And look at that. Reduce the output there, reduce our two strip even more. And I'll reduce this guy, a little bit of green to the shadows cause you're in a forest. So normally whenever you're outdoors, you add blue to the shadows to make it look more correct. But in a forest, your shadows are gonna be a little bit green. So there's that. So really I should move that over there, but I want it to be bluey cause it's a little bit of a dreamy look. There's that. And I think I'm gonna make our highlights a little bit even yellower. And then I don't have to do as much over here at all yeah i'm liking that and of course you could stop at any of these steps if you wanted to we lost a little bit of contrast with that two strip look so i'm just gonna bring that back down bring this guy back up and now i mean we've really transformed this shot from kid with his camera in the forest with some chick to uh hunger games or you know whatever i mean she's got a bit of that katniss vibe I could totally say, you know, Hunger Games. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I sure did. I love being able to be as loud as I want. Hopefully it's not too echoey because I don't have any acoustic treatments in this room with such high ceilings. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. If you want even more fantastic stuff, check out our socials, links for which are down in the description below. If you want to be top tier amazing, go over to meesternmedia.com slash products. Do yourself a favor and check out the House Let's Pack, which you saw one LUT featured here. Super easy. Let's add another one just for kicks and giggles to see what happens. <laughs> Nice, look at that. That's pretty cool. That is like super Alice in Wonderlandy. I kind of like that better anyway. Bring that down a bit. Crush that down a little bit. Nice. Really blow out the highlights. Cool. Sweet. And if LUTs aren't your thing, check out the Bright Lights Light Leak Pack because they're also amazing. And since we've done the tutorial already anyway, I'll go over and just, you know, just quick little bonus thing for people who stuck through with this. I will show you how great light leaks are. So I'm just gonna go over to here, pop this in. Um, <laughs> yep, there's an endpoint, there's an out point. Hopefully that is enough, yep. I will set this to screen, hot. And now I will just correct this just like a normal clip, making it blue. 
now we play through and look at that. I think that is pretty neat looking. All right, anyway, enough shameless self-promotion. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.